Money. It's what the Beatles wanted, and it's hard to argue that it's what makes the world go round. Ever since the conception of money thousands of years ago, it's gone through some amazing transformations. From metal coins and paper notes to credit cards and Bitcoin, money has continued to evolve, and as have the ways in which we use it. It is reasonable to assume that how we use money even 10 years into the future will be different from today, such as the rate of change due to rapidly emerging technologies and continually changing lifestyles. The use of money has come a long way since its humble beginnings in the ancient world. The earliest evidence of currency is the Mesopotamian shekel, which dates back some 5,000 years. The first known minted coins were found in a minting factory in Guangzhou, China. The coin mint is thought to have operated around 770 BCE making it the world's oldest evidence of a system of money. These Chinese coins were shovel-shaped and made from basic metals. Ancient coins have also been discovered in Greece and Turkey, indicating that the concept of money was something intrinsic to humans, even in ancient times. Greek coins depicting sea turtles were discovered by archaeologists, who put the date of use at roughly 700 BCE. The Greeks took it a step further in around 600 BCE, when Lydia's king Alietes minted what's thought to be the first currency, the Lydian stater. The staters were made from a mix of gold and silver and came with the innovation of varying denominations. Coins were stamped with different seals, often animals, that signified the coin's value. For example, in Lydian society, a jug of wine might have cost you one snake coin and two owls. Many of the early coins tended to be made from common metals such as tin, bronze, lead, brass, copper, and iron. Other societies also adopted forms of money to replace their barter systems. Items that were rare and could be controlled and easily circulated were used as forms of payment. These included pearls, seashells, copper, iron, amber, and of course, gold and silver. The introduction of money into societies was a massive transformation. Prior to using currency, goods and services were attained with barter systems. If you wanted some food, you might trade it for some tools or some spices. If you could perform a service, such as making and repairing something, you might offer that in return for some silks, wine, or weapons. Needless to say, the barter system had its limitations. It was very time-consuming having to decide whether each trade was fair and what the values were for products and services. The introduction of money sped things up and trade around the world took off. This was because, first of all, internal and domestic trade boomed. With people only needing to exchange coins for goods or services, transactions were faster and increased significantly. Ancient Chinese and Greek societies developed rapidly and perfected their domestic trading systems before branching out successfully into foreign trade. Gold and silver coins paved the way for international trade to open up. Because these precious metals had standardized and agreed upon value, countries could trade freely with each other by agreeing on fixed prices for goods. Civilizations that could mint gold and silver into coins became incredibly prosperous. Colonial powers were quick to pounce on the rare metals in their colonized territories for the continued production of coins. As trade routes became more advanced and widespread, more societies were introduced to the concept of using money. Naturally, it was risky and troublesome to ship huge quantities of coins around the world, which led to early forms of credit systems. Traders would leave their coin deposits with a trusted agent. The agent would then issue a confirmation of the balance on paper, which the traders would then use when negotiating with clients. These claim checks were the first step towards paper money and the first types of credit cards. China was again the center of innovation, with the introduction of government-approved paper currency. During the Song Dynasty in the 1100s, the government issued paper money. Paper printing mills opened up and printed notes in varying inks to signify their denominations. When the Mongol Empire took control of the Song Dynasty in the 13th century, they also adopted the paper money scheme. This was introduced to the West, most significantly to Marco Polo, who was blown away by the concept. Europe had begun using coins and soon jumped on board with printing paper money. Not for the first time, people soon found that simply printing or minting more money didn't translate to greater wealth and the effects of mass inflation were felt throughout the most of societies. More money equals more spending power, which drives up prices. Records dating back to Alexander the Great's empire and ancient Greece tell of the mistakes made by flooding economies with too much money. Counterfeiting was another inevitable downside to paper currency, but the benefits of this incredibly convenient system far outweighed the negatives. Paper money was a form of early monetary technology, and it helped to open up the world and enhance the quality of life for many societies. People were able to trade and travel more readily, which led to the system of sharing new ideas and improvement in lifestyles. Colonial governments in North America and Australia issued paper currencies as IOUs. 
the colonies would run out of cash and had to save them from reverting back to bartering, the governments provided paper money to act as a guarantee of credit. In the 17th century, when Canada was still a French colony, soldiers were issued playing cards that were signed by the governor. The cards came with denominations and were used in place of coins. As the colonies became more developed, local banks began issuing currency. Australian banks began distributing their own notes from 1817, and in 1861, the US government began issuing coins and dollars. It was far easier when governments controlled the production of money. When private banks supplied currencies, it could be hard to establish the validity and the true value of the money. In the 1920s, charge cards were issued by Western Union to its regular customers. Pretty soon, department stores, hotels, service stations began offering similar credit perks. The widespread use of the modern credit card took off in the 1950s. Purchasing goods by credit has been around since ancient times, but the diner's card was created from necessity. In 1950, a businessman went out to lunch with an associate and he forgot his wallet. To avoid future embarrassment, they began planning a multi-use plastic credit card. The diner's card was a hit, and over 40,000 users signed up for it in its first year. It wasn't long before other major institutions jumped on board, and the American Express card was released in 1958. In 2004, the world's first mobile wallet was launched in Japan. NTT designed mobile phones that could be used to pay on the spot. This technology is now used all over the world, in supermarkets, restaurants, train stations, hotels, and shops. It's estimated that mobile wallets now account for around half of the world's transactions, with almost 3 billion people using some kind of mobile payment. At least half of these come from Asian countries, with India, China, Japan, and Southeast Asia being among the biggest users. By now, most of us are familiar with mobile pay providers such as PayPal, Apple Pay, and Alipay. With these huge leaps in technology and user-friendly devices comes a costly toll on some traditional institutions and jobs. The convenience of modern payment systems means fewer and fewer people carry cash. This means less people rely on visiting a bank or ATMs to take care of their money transactions. As a result, thousands of bank branches around the world have shut down, taking everything online. In 2022, over 3,000 bank branches were closed down in the US. Almost half of the UK's banks have closed in the past 10 years, while 1 in 10 branches are closing across Australia. It can mean troubling times, not just for, you know, well, obviously bank employees. Retail and service jobs are also becoming obsolete, as mobile and electronic pay systems have taken over the need for staff on registers or ticket booths. What does the future hold, then? Well. It's clear that payments and transactions will become increasingly digitalized or digitized. Alternate forms of currency are very much likely to remain popular, of course. Cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin have grown into trillion dollar industries. Many are drawn to cryptocurrencies for the freedom of dealing with a currency that is outside the control of traditional finance systems. The lack of regulation surrounding cryptocurrencies is a matter of concern, though. As some people fear the relative anonymity of these forms is attractive to criminals and terrorist organizations. Advancements in technology will continue to threaten those with little or no access to mobile payment systems. These people depend on cash. And it is for this reason that we won't be seeing the end of dollar bills, pound notes, or euros anytime soon. As long as people continue to demand more convenience, forms of money and its transactions are likely to keep evolving. The digitalization, or sorry, digitization of money has made buying and paying faster, but it also brings added security dangers of hacking and online theft. Safeguarding these risks must be a priority for future systems of money. And as for cash, don't worry, it'll still be around, I promise you. After all, there's nothing quite like the feeling of a crisp wad of notes in your wallet. 